Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. Gallenstein and we are here again with lecture number 14. So in lecture 14, we're going to talk about a method called difference in differences. Difference in differences is one of these quasi-experimental methods that we can use to identify causal, uh, a causal impact or to solve the omitted variable bias problem. And difference in differences is a method that we can use only when we have a panel data set and only when that panel data set has particular characteristics. That is, when we have data before an intervention is put into place and data after that intervention is put into place. Okay, so this is one of these strong methods where if we have the right data, we can use this method uh, to, to go a long way to trying to solve that omitted variable bias problem. Okay, so with that introduction, let's dive right in. All right, so uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a background, a little bit of an introduction as to what this is, try to get some intuition on it. I'm going to spend a lot of time in this lecture actually giving us the intuition about how this method works. Uh, and then, of course, as usual, we'll end, we'll conclude with a Stata demo. Okay, so difference in differences is a specific application of the panel data models that we discussed in the previous lecture. A difference in difference model uses a two-year panel data set to estimate the causal impact of some economic intervention on some outcome variable. So in this case, when we use the difference in difference model, we're typically using this type of model when we have some sort of intervention. Now, this could be paired with a randomized intervention, like with a randomized controlled trial experiment, or it could be paired with a non-random intervention, or it could be paired with a natural experiment, which I'll talk about later. Okay, the key here is that we're going to be able to get a pre and post um, assessment. We're going to look at before this economic intervention was put into place and after the economic intervention is put into place. And so we have a two-year panel data set, before and after. I'll make that more clear. So a difference in difference model <clears throat> seeks to identify an unbiased impact of some economic intervention by making two comparisons. All right. So it's difference in differences. We're taking a difference of differences. All right. So there's two comparisons that are happening here. The first is we are going to compare a treatment group versus a control group. All right. That means when we use a difference in difference model, there's always a treatment group and a control group. There's a group of people that received some intervention, and there's a group of people that did not receive some intervention. So if you've received the intervention, you're in the treatment group. If you haven't received an intervention, uh, you're in the control group. Now, this could be an intervention that was randomly assigned, so you could a randomly assigned treatment versus control, or it could be non-randomly assigned. Um, but as long as you have a treatment group and a control group, uh, you can use this method. Okay, so this can be paired with a, um, an impact assessment of an intervention that was not randomly assigned, um, and it could be paired with a natural experiment, something um, like a policy change. Okay, so the first comparison is treatment versus control. We're comparing treatment and control. Now, with difference and differences, remember, because we have panel data, two-year panel data, we also are going to compare before and after. All right, so we're going to compare individuals before the intervention and after the intervention. All right, so difference and differences allows us, what, what, what we do when we use difference and difference is we're going to compare treatment versus control, and we're going to compare before versus after. Okay. All right, so uh, let's take a look at an example. So imagine we want to know uh, how textbooks affect students' test scores. A nonprofit organization is implementing a program in which they're providing textbooks to students in uh, 100 schools in Senegal. All right, now this sounds like an opportunity for an RCT or an randomized experiment. However, they are not randomly assigning who receives the textbooks and who uh, does not. And therefore, we cannot use a randomized control trial experiment. Uh, we're not conducting a randomized control experiment. Okay. Uh, so we can't use an RCT to identify the impact of the textbooks. But here we may be able to use difference and differences. <clears throat> so imagine that we collect data. We collect data on 200 schools, including the 100 that received the textbooks and 100 schools that did not. This would allow us to compare between schools that received the textbooks, aka the treatment group, and schools that did not receive the, did not receive the textbooks, aka the control group. 
we can also collect data on the, all 200 schools before the textbooks are provided and then a survey after all the textbooks are provided. And so in this case, we can compare treatment schools to control schools and we compare uh, schools before and after. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So we can use this data, this treatment and control before and after data. We can use this data conduct to conduct a difference in difference estimation. Okay, so if we have data before and after intervention, we can compare before and after and compare treated and untreated or treatment versus control. Okay, so that is the kind of the underlying situation. When we have that, when we have before and after data for a treatment and a control group, we can use difference and differences. So we have to have a two-year panel data set. And that panel data set has to come from before an intervention was put into place and after an intervention was put into place. Okay. And it needs to include both people that received the intervention and people that did not receive the intervention. In that case, we can use difference and differences. All right. So now I want to go even deeper. We're just going to keep, keep digging and keep understanding this more and more. Okay. All right, so difference and differences, or as you'll see later, I'm going to keep using this um, uh, this acronym DID, difference and differences. Sometimes you'll see instead of difference and differences, sometimes you'll see double difference. That's another um, another uh, acronym for this, <clears throat> or another name for this. Okay, so DID or difference and differences, just like in the other panel data set. Remember, in the other panel data models. Our other panel data models, the first difference and the fixed effects models, allowed us to control for time uh, for observables and time invariant unobservables. Okay, difference in differences also allows us to control for observables and time invariant unobservables. All right, uh, and so this is a more robust method than, let's say, propensity score matching, which allows us to only control for observables. Uh, and so we should prefer difference and difference over propensity square matching uh, if we have before and after data. Okay. All right. Now, with different with with difference and differences, there is one key assumption, one main assumption. It's called the parallel trend assumption. All right. I'm going to spend a bunch of time talking about what this means, um, but we'll begin here. Okay. So parallel trend assumption. What this assumption says is that the treatment group, right, the people with the intervention, um, the treatment group uh, have the same or has the same trend over time as the control group, all right, those without the intervention. They have the same trend over time. They're changing over time in the same way. The parallel trend assumption is effectively the same assumption as the other panel data models, uh, and, and that means that there are no time variant unobservables. There is nothing that changes over time that affects uh, the treatment group in a way differently than it affects the control group. All right. So, uh, so this parallel trend assumption is basically the same thing as to say that there are no time variant unobservables. However, in this context, we call it the parallel trend assumption because this provides us with a deeper intuition behind what it means to not have time variant unobservables. All right. It gives us a deeper intuition as to what exactly we're doing when we conduct a difference and difference um, regression model. Okay, so I'm going to spend a bunch of time on this to really drive home this intuition. Okay, um, so setting ourselves up for that. Uh, so when we use the difference to difference method, we always have two things. We have a treatment group and a control group. And also, we have before and after. So the treatment group received the intervention that we were interested in. The control group did not. Before data has information on the entire sample, treatment and control group. It's very important. Before data on the entire sample, treatment group and control group, before the intervention. And then the after data has information on the entire sample, treatment and control group, after the intervention. All right. Very important. Okay, difference in difference allows us to estimate the impact of the intervention by comparing the trend in the control group to the trend in the treatment group over time. 
So here's the intuition. The treatment group has not uh, was not randomly assigned, so the treatment group and the control group are not the same on average. However, all right, so maybe just reinforcing this, uh, right? If a treatment is randomly assigned, then we can say that uh, the treatment group and the control group are probably going to be the same on average. And we have to confirm that it achieves statistical independence. Uh, but if it's randomly assigned, then the treatment group should be the same as the control group on average. Okay. But now, oftentimes when we use difference and difference, the treatment was not randomly assigned. Which means that the treatment group will, almost, will most likely not be the same as the control group on average. Okay. However, perhaps, okay, so this is where the difference in difference model comes in. However, perhaps the treatment group and the control group are changing in the same way over time. That means perhaps the treatment group and the control group have the same trend, the same time trend. That means as time changes, the treatment group and the control group are changing in the same way obviously in the absence of the intervention. So in the absence of the intervention, even though the treatment group and the control group are not the same on average, perhaps they're changing in the same way over time. All right, so let's drive this point home. All right, uh, so so imagine here we've got we've got two groups. So we've got the treatment group and they're, they're in the blue uh, and the control group there in the orange. Okay, and so on the y-axis here, we have uh, some outcome variable y, and on the x-axis here, we have time. And so this graph, what I'm trying to show here is that uh, the treatment group is different from the control group. They're not the same. Their, their lines don't overlap with each other. Um, the treatment group, uh, this is even without an intervention, the treatment group has a higher value for the outcome variable y than the, than the control group has. All right. So the treatment group and the treatment group and the control group are not the same. However, they follow the same trend. All right. So they follow the same trend over time. So you can see they're both changing at the same rate over time. They have the same trend. As time changes, they both go down and they both go down at the same rate. All right, so this is an example. This this graph here is just illustrating uh, the idea of a treatment group and a control group that are different because the treatment wasn't randomly assigned. However, they follow the same trend, all right? So what we're going to do with the difference in difference model uh, is that the difference in difference model allows us to get a causal impact as long as the treatment group and the control group have the same trend over time. So as long as the treatment group and the control group have the same trend, then the difference in difference model will allow you to identify uh, an un, unbiased coefficient on the intervention. Okay. All right. So let's, I'm going to use a bunch of graphs that look like this to illustrate it. Okay. Um, and we're going to illustrate how difference of difference works, why it works, uh, and then illustrate why we need this parallel trend assumption. Um, now you might be able to get the intuition here. You can see that the two groups, the treatment group and the control group, have parallel trends. They, they change in the same way over time. They're, they're, they're parallel to each other. Uh, they have parallel trends. Okay, We need them. We need that parallel trend. That means we need the treatment group and the control group to change in the same way over time. Okay, uh, so let's do it. Let's illustrate this. Let's use a bunch of graphs, and uh, we'll try to make it clear. All right, so if the treatment group and the control group have the same trend, we will be able to identify an unbiased causal impact of our intervention, even though the treatment group and the control group are not the same on average. So that's what is pretty remarkable here. You know that when we when we randomly assign a variable, we will get a treatment group and a control group that are the same on average, and that allows us to estimate the causal impact. And here, what we're saying is that we have a treatment group and a control group that are not the same. However, if as long as they have parallel trends, as long as they change in the same way over time, they have the same trend, we will be able to accomplish it. All right, so let us see why. Remember, difference in difference is a method that identifies the impact by considering two differences. The difference between the treatment group and the control group, and the difference before the intervention and after the intervention. 
So now using these graphs, we're going to take a look and see what this, what this means. All right, the first difference. All right, and when I say first difference here, I mean uh, the first of these two differences, the right? difference between the treatment group and control group, or the difference between the intervention and after the intervention. All right, first difference. All right, so let's imagine, so we're using the same graph as we had before. All right, this is the, these, this is the time trend, the, the time trend uh, for the treatment group, the time trend for the control group. All right. Now, when we collect data, we only collect data at one particular period of time. And so imagine that we're collecting a survey at this moment in time, all right, represented by this green dashed line. If we collect data at this moment, then what's going to happen? is that we will have uh, a data point for the treatment group here, and we'll have a data point for the control group here. All right, and so if we wanted to find the difference between the treatment group and the control group, we would take our dependent variable for the treatment group, so that's uh, Y treatment or Y treat, and then we would take the outcome variable Y for the control group here, we'd see that here, the Y for the control. So we can find the difference between the treatment group and the control group. All right, so that's the first difference, the difference between the treatment group and the control group. Now, all right, as I use the word first difference, um, I don't uh, mean to confuse you with the first difference regression model. This, uh, that's not what I'm referring to here. When I say first difference, what I'm referring to is just the first of the two differences that the difference in difference model uses. Uh, the difference in difference model uses two different differences. Uh, and so the first of those differences is the difference between the treatment group and the control group. Okay, so just be careful not to confuse that. All right, so the first difference is the difference between the treatment group and the control group. All right. Now, second difference. All right, the second difference that we consider, as I've mentioned several times before, right, we're, we are comparing the treatment group to the control group. We're also comparing people before and after. All right. So the first difference is comparing the treatment and control groups. The second difference is comparing before and after. All right. So let's see what that looks like. All right. So here, uh, this, what you see here in, is the difference over time for the treatment group. All right. So right now I'm just looking at the treatment group. All right. So uh, if we have before and after data, that means we have two surveys, a first survey and a second survey. All right. So the first survey measures the variables for the treatment for the treatment group and the control group at this time period all right so this green dash line and they measure it for uh, the treatment and control group at this time period all right and so now we have two different observations for the treatment and control group at different times so time one time two all right so then the difference over time can be measured by comparing the value um, from the first survey to the second survey. All right, so here we can see the first, the difference over time. So this is the change in the treatment group over time. So we have the value for the treatment group before, pre, so the first survey, and then the value for the treatment group after, so it's the post survey, okay, or the second survey. So now if we wanted to measure the change um, in the treatment group over time, we would do Y post minus Y pre. So the outcome variable after minus the outcome variable before. And so this gives us the difference over time. So now we have two differences. We have the difference between the treatment group and the control group, and we have the difference over time. All right. So that's, the, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use these two different differences to estimate the impact of the treatment. Okay, but now so far, I don't have a treatment. There's no treatment. There's no actual intervention here. So let me illustrate an intervention. All right, so now we're going to illustrate difference and differences. All right, so let's imagine that there is an intervention. Let's imagine here um, there is an, uh, let's say, yeah. All right, so we're, we're intervening by providing students with textbooks. All right, um, and so now this y variable is test scores, and uh, in in this in this location in which we're working, uh, unfortunately, over time, students test scores are going down, um, and so we implement we give everyone textbooks to see if we can um, improve this y, so improve uh, students' test scores. 
All right, and so we have a before survey and after, and a before survey and an after survey. So now let's say we've we've we implement an intervention. We give students textbooks. So if we're going to give students textbooks before we do it, we take a baseline survey. All right, so let's illustrate that here. So it's the baseline survey, uh, before survey. All right, a pre-survey. Okay, and so we get observations for the control group and observations for the treatment group. Uh, before the intervention, then we have an intervention, all right, and then we have the after survey. So we collect data after the intervention has been put into place. Okay. Now, let's imagine that the intervention has no effect. If the intervention has no effect, this is what we would see. There would be an intervention, but nothing would change to the treatment group Nothing would change to the treatment group after the intervention is put into place. Nothing would change. Okay, so um, so let's see this. So the treatment group, this is the group of people that are supposed to get the intervention. All right, this is their trend. All right, the treatment group are the people that are supposed to get the intervention. The control group are the, are the people supposed to not get the intervention. Okay, so before the intervention comes into place, we collect a, a before survey on the control group and on the treatment group, all right? Then the intervention goes into place. That means we give the textbooks to uh, the students in the treatment group, and we do not give the textbooks to students in the control group. And so if the, if the textbooks have no effect whatsoever, then we would expect that the treatment group just continues like this. That basically the intervention has no effect and so nothing changes it just continues at the same trend um, it just yeah it just continues exactly as it was before all right but now let's imagine that the treat that the intervention does cause an impact on the treatment group all right just to be clear we give an intervention the textbooks and we give it only to the treatment group only to the people that are supposed to get it all right now let's imagine that it causes an impact we might see something like this now, the treatment group still has the same trend over time. It's still changing. The slope is still the same. However, because the treatment group received textbooks, now their test scores improve. They still have the same trend. They're still going down overall. But introducing the textbooks, um, introducing the intervention here, uh, introducing the textbooks allowed the students to improve their, text score, their test scores. All right, so now we can say that the intervention causes an impact on the treatment group. But now the question is, when we're doing this analysis, we want to be able to figure out what this impact is. We want to be able to measure it. Now, we don't have data here. We only have the before data, right? So uh, we only have the data measured here, and we only have the data measured here. And so we need to use the data that we have to find the estimate of this impact. All right, we need to find an estimate of this impact, how much the treatment group improved as a result of receiving the intervention. All right, so how do we do that? How do we, co how do we combine the, dif uh, the, the two different differences? How do we combined, combine a comparison of treatment group versus control group and before and after? All right, so let's show you. All right, so we could find the difference. Okay, actually, let me set this up a little bit more first. All right, so now let's imagine um, that we don't have a panel data set. Okay, um, let's just illustrate what, what this analysis would look like if we didn't have the advantage of both differences, basically. Uh, and I just want to do this to set us up for really understanding uh, exactly how difference and difference works. Okay, so let's imagine that this intervention was implemented, but we did not have a, a, a before survey. We only have an after survey. We only have one survey and it was collected afterwards. Now we want to measure the impact of the intervention. All right, the impact of the intervention you'll see is gonna be here. It's the difference, uh, it's the difference here. But we wouldn't have any information about what's happening here. We only have the inline survey. We only have the inline survey. Okay, so uh, what we could do is we could find the difference between the treatment group and the control group, 
All right, that's the first difference we mentioned, right? So we take the outcome variable for the treatment group and subtract the outcome variable for the control group. All right, so this will be the difference between the treatment group and the control group. However, we know, all right, but this difference would be biased. It will, be a, it will give us a biased estimate of the impact of the intervention. The treatment group and the control group are different on average, so this would have an upward bias. So if we just compared these, if we just took the difference between the treatment group and the control group after the intervention, we're going to get a biased estimate because the treatment group and the control group are already different in the absence of the treatment. The treatment group and the control group are different. And so I cannot simply compare the treatment group with the control group after the intervention. I can't just use a single data set and measure the difference between the treatment group and the control group because the treatment group and the control group are different. Okay, so I can't sim I can't only compare treatment, treatment and control. Can't do that. All right. Well, now, uh, what if we only had data on the treatment group? What if we only had data on the treatment group? Now, this is a common question. People come to ask me, Dr. Gallenstein, uh, well, what if we have before and after data on the people that received an intervention? What if, what if we only have before and after data? And I'd say, well, you do the best that you can with what you've got. Um, but there are there could be problems with having only before and after data. All right, so let me show you what it looks like here. So what we have, so you can see from this graph that I no longer have a treatment uh, a control group. So now I only have information on my treatment group. All right, we've shown in blue. Now let's say we have this treatment group before and after. We have the before survey and we have the after survey. All right, and the invert the intervention was implemented in between. So now we can look at the change in the treatment group over time. How does it change over time? How does it change before and after? All right, we can do that. We can compare that. We'd see that we can see that that would be here, the difference over time. This is the change in the treatment group over time. It's the difference um, between the outcome variable for the treatment group after the intervention and the outcome variable for the treatment group before the intervention. All right, so we can compare. We can do the post minus the pre. Now, just by looking at this, we can see a, a major problem. If I'm only doing a pre and post, if I'm only doing the second difference, the difference before and after, perhaps you can see it. If I did this analysis and I, and I uh, took the difference between the outcome variable after the intervention, um, the difference between that and the outcome variable before the intervention, so y post minus y pre, if I did this, if I calculated this, I would get this difference that we see here in this bracket. All right, and you would see that the uh, that this estimate y post minus y pre would be negative. It would be negative, and so if I looked at that and I said, well, that's my treatment effect. I'm comparing the same person before and after. I'm doing pre and post before and after, and I just compare the outcome after the intervention to the outcome before the intervention. If I did that, I would get a negative number. And it would look like my intervention caused uh, a reduction in the dependent variable. Do you see that? If I compared this to this number, all right, y post minus y pre, I would get a negative number, which would make it look, it would make it look like the intervention caused a reduction in the dependent variable y. It basically would look like the intervention did not work. But the reason it would look that way is because we're capturing the time trend. It's not that the intervention caused um, the, the, the dependent variable to go down over time. Uh, but, or but after the intervention, is the intervention didn't cause it to go down. There was already a downward trend that we're not controlling for. We're not controlling for this downward trend. We know that actually, well, we 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 know as we look at this graph, uh, a researcher that only has before and after data for the treatment group does not know, um, because they only observe this information and this information right here. Um, but we know as we look at this that actually the intervention had a positive effect because we would want to compare um, 
We want to compare y with the intervention to y without the intervention. So this difference here, this is the true impact of the intervention. That with the intervention, uh, y increases by a given amount. But we're getting a biased estimate if we only compare uh, before and after. It actually, if we only compare before and after, it looks like the intervention reduced the outcome when, when in fact, in reality, uh, there's only a downward time trend. Okay. So this would give us a biased estimate because the treatment group is changing over time. All right. There's, the treatment group has a downward trend. And so if we just compare before and after for the treatment group, um, we won't be able to control for that time trend and we will have we will get bias okay all right so the difference in difference difference in differences i'm just reviewing here difference in differences is a method that identifies the impact by considering two differences the first one the difference between the treatment group and the control group the second difference the difference before the intervention and after the intervention if the treatment group and the control group have the same trends over time then we will be able to get an unbiased estimate by combining the difference between the, the treatment group and the control group with the difference before and after the intervention. All right, so let's make that clear. So what we're going to do, what, what we're going to do here with difference and differences is we're, gonna, we're going to combine the two differences that I just discussed. So I've discussed the difference between the treatment group and the control group. And I said that on its own, it would give, a, give us a biased result, all right? And then I also showed you the difference over time. And I said that on its own, it would give us a biased result. So we have two differences. The difference between the treatment group and the control group, which on its own is not enough. We also have the difference over time, which on its own is not enough. But what I'm gonna show you is that when I combine both differences, as long as the trends are the same as uh, as long as the trends are the same over time, so as long as we have that parallel trend assumption, then if I combine these two differences, if I combine these two differences, I will uh, I will be able to get an unbiased effect. All right, so let's see how that works. All right, so what you see here is the true impact of the intervention. This here is the true impact of the intervention. All right. And so this is what we're trying to get. We're trying to get this impact right here. We're trying to get this effect. As soon as we implemented the intervention, students' test scores went up, all right? But we only get data before and after, okay? And so uh, we want to estimate this true effect using the two differences that we've already mentioned. All right. So. Here's the difference between the treatment group and the control group before. All right, so, so here's one of the differences. So the difference between the treatment group and the control group before the intervention, so we call this dy pre. All right, that's the dependent variable pre for the treatment. So, so the subscript here, pre, that means before. It's the, the pre-survey, the, the, pre survey, the before survey. And then the superscript here, t equals 1, that means for the treatment group. So I take y for the treatment group before, and I subtract y for the control group before. And this gives me the difference between the treatment group and the control group before the intervention. All right. Now I'm going to do the same after the intervention. So the, here's the difference, the difference between the treatment group and the control group after. So I'll call this dy post. It's the outcome variable for the treatment group after the intervention minus the outcome for the control group um, after the intervention. All right, so here is our first set of differences. All right, the difference between the treatment group and the control group, difference between the treatment group and the control group. All right, so now here we go. This is what we do. The true impact is the difference of the differences. Now, okay, let me make sure I'm making one thing clear. When I say a difference, that's the same thing as saying uh, a subtraction, okay? And so we have the a difference in differences, all right? So we take the difference in differences. We take the difference, we subtract two different subtractions. We take the difference between two different differences. 
<laughs> I hope this doesn't confuse it. Um, all right. So, um, so what we do is we take the difference between the treatment group and the control group after the intervention. So there's DUI post. So DUI post. That's um, okay. And then we subtract the difference between the treatment group and the control group before. So we take. So we're taking. Uh, the differences between the treatment group and the control group, that's what DUI post and DUI pre are, all right? And then we take the difference between those two differences over time, all right? So it's a difference in differences. So we take, we subtract two different subtractions. So we take, we take this difference here and subtract this difference here, all right? And so it should make it clear. All right, so now let me reinforce this to make sure it's super clear. All right, so now, um, if the intervention had no impact, then the blue line here, the treatment group trend, would look like this. It would go all the way down. So this, this dashed line here represents what would have happened to the treatment group in the absence of the treatments. This is what would have happened to them if they had not received the intervention. All right, so the difference between what happened to the treatment group and uh, what happened to the treatment group with the intervention um, the difference between what would happen to the treatment group with the intervention and what would have happened to the treatment group without the intervention, this difference here is our true impact. That's the impact of our intervention. Okay, so then how does difference and differences work? How do we get this true impact by taking the difference between these two differences? All right, let's take a look. Now, this difference here, the difference, the difference between the treatment group and the control group, after the intervention is called dy post so the, here's here's the after difference the post difference all right and then we'll recognize here that because of the parallel trend the change before so the difference between the treatment group and the control group before the intervention dy pre just to remind us here dy pre okay dy post all right, that this is the difference between the treatment group and the control group before the intervention. So just by looking at this, we can intuit it. If we, if we take the difference between the treatment group and the control group afterward, after the intervention, and then we subtract the difference between the treatment group and the control group um, before the intervention, that would leave what that would leave this left over, the difference between the treatment group and then what would have happened to the treatment group. And, and this difference here is the impact. And so by subtracting these two subtractions, by taking the difference of these two differences, we are able to estimate the true impact. All right, so the difference in differences is a method that identifies the impact by considering two differences. The difference between the treatment group and the control group, all right, and then the difference over before and after the intervention. All right, so if the treatment group and control group have the same trends over time, then we will be able to get an unbiased estimate by combining the difference between the treatment group and the control group with the difference before and after. All right, so now with that illustration, let's bring back in the key assumption, the parallel trend assumption, and let's drive this home and make it super clear why this is important and why it's necessary. All right, so the parallel trend assumption. The parallel, trend, the parallel trend assumption says that the treatment group and control group are changing in the same way over time. This means that there are no observed time variant characteristics that are affecting the treatment and the control groups, uh, at least affecting them in different ways. There is nothing changing over time that affects the treatment group differently than the control group. That is why they have the same trend. All right, so the parallel trend assumption is the same assumption as in other panel data models. It is that there is selection on observables and time invariant unobservables. Well, so let's see what it looks like to violate the parallel trend assumption and why that would cause bias. Now, just to be clear, as we looked here before, the treatment group and the control group have the same trend over time. They're changing the same way. They have the same slope. What would it look like if they had different slopes? What if they had different time trends? What if, 
what if their trends were not parallel? All right, so let's see what that would look like if their trends were not parallel. All right, so here we go. We've got our treatment group and our control group. You'll notice here that our treatment group and our control group are not parallel. They, they change in different ways over time. As you go from the before to the after, um, they change in different ways. Why does that cause bias to the to the to the uh, difference and difference model? Well, let's see. First, imagine an intervention that does causally impact the treatment group. It causally impacts those that receive it. And so now I've put this uh, dashed line here again. Uh, the difference between the solid blue line and the dashed blue line, that's the true effect. That's the true impact. Uh, for those familiar with experimental uh, research, this dashed line here, we could say, is the counterfactual. All right, It's what would have happened to the treatment group if they had not actually received the intervention. All right, So the true impact of this intervention is the difference between this solid line and this dashed line. Okay, but the problem is, is that the treatment group is changing in a different way over time than the control group. With that said, why or why does this cause bias in my difference in difference estimation? Well, let's take a look. Again, let's take the difference between the treatment group and the control group um, after the intervention, so the DY post. And we'll do the same. Uh, beforehand, so uh, dy pre, the difference between the treatment group and the control group um, before the intervention. Now, just from looking at this, we can see that the difference between the treatment group and the control group before the intervention is not the same as the difference between the treatment group and the control group after the intervention. In the at so here, this dashed line. Um, in the absence of the intervention. All right, so it was like it was before. And so the true impact is not going to be equal to delta y post minus delta y pre. So basically, the difference in difference method will not allow us to identify the true impact. If we took dy post, this huge difference here, this huge difference here, and we subtracted dy pre, so only this little amount, we would not get the true impact. We would have a bias. All right, so the difference between the treatment group and the control group is the, is uh, different at the post-survey. All right, so this difference is, the difference between the treatment group and the control group is different at the post-survey relative to the pre-survey. And therefore, I can't control for this amount of difference using the data before the intervention. Okay, so if we do not have a parallel trend, we will have a biased estimate. All right, so th hopefully that gives a super clear intuition about why, about what difference a different model does and why we need this parallel trend assumption. All right, so now uh, with a solid background in the intuition about what's happening here, uh, and why we might use the difference in difference model. Let me go into showing you what this model actually looks like. So let's take a look. So here is a generic um, regression model, a, a generic panel data regression model that implements a difference in difference, a difference in differences estimation or DID estimation. All right, so let me go through this item by item to give us an idea of what um, this regression is and how it works. Okay, so you can see here the dependent variable, uh, some outcome variable. Uh, in the example of textbooks, this outcome variable is probably going to be um, test scores. Okay, um, And it is indexed by I and T, I indicating for the individual, T indicating for the year. Um, the outcome variable um, is measured in year zero or before uh, a program is implemented and in year one, which is after it was implemented. All right. Now, T, as you see your capital T in the, in the regression, capital T is a variable that indicates uh, the individuals who would receive the intervention. So T equals one. Um, 
C equals one if an individual uh, receives, uh, if they receive the intervention, and zero if they do not. It does not change over time. It is only indexed by I. Now let me make that clear, and I'll make it even more clear when we do the state of demo. This t variable uh, is basically the treatment variable. It equals one for the people that receive the treatment, the intervention. It equals two for people that did not receive the intervention. But now we have treat we have vi we have data on these individuals before and after the the intervention. T equals one if a person has been assigned to the treatment group, regardless of whether or not they have actually received the intervention, and regardless of when they received the intervention. All right, so it does not change over time. It only varies between people, so it only has subscript I. Okay, R. I'm using R as a variable to indicate the year. So R will equal one for year one, so that's after the intervention, and it will and it and R will equal zero for year zero, that is before the intervention. Okay. And finally, and here's the big take a message for the difference in difference regression model. Here we have the interaction term between the treatment assignment, or basically the treatment group, and the year. So here we interact these two. We multiply the treatment variable by the year variable. And when we do that, we'll get a coefficient on that interaction term, beta 3. And beta 3 hat is our DID estimator. This is the estimate of the causal impact of the intervention so long as the parallel trend assumption holds. All right, so in a difference in difference model, beta one hat is not what we're interested in. In a difference in difference model, beta three is what we are interested in. The, the, the coefficient on the interaction term. The coefficient on the interaction term is what is going to give us the impact of the intervention. All right, so that is uh, the difference in difference model. Now, one way of thinking about it is to think about uh, basically this variable, this interaction term between the treatment and the round or treatment in the year. Um, this effectively is our new intervention variable. This is the variable that we are most interested in. We want to get an unbiased estimate of beta 3. Okay, But R is included in the model to control for changes over time. And T is included in the model to control for differences between the treatment group and the control group. Okay. Now, in a DID regression, you may also include uh, covariates or other independent variables. Those variables should vary over time. All right. So time invariant variables should not be necessary because time invariant observables are controlled for by I. All right, so my point here is just that you can use covariance. Okay, so let's reiterate the parallel trend assumption one more time. The parallel trend assumption um, is, the, is, the, is the assumption that the treatment group and the control group change in the same way over time. They have parallel trends. All right. Now, this assumption is effectively the same as in the other panel data, and that is that... Um, our new key independent variable of interest, which is T interacted with R, that is treatment interacted with the year, as long as that is uncorrelated with the error term, then we will have an unbiased treatment effect, an unbiased, an unbiased impact of, um, of whatever intervention we're measuring, so like textbooks in my example. Okay. All right, so as long as the trends are the same, uh, as, which would then imply that that um, the interaction term is uncorrelated with the error term, um, that would give us an unbiased estimate. This is effectively the same assumption as in the other panel data models where we said that there is selection on observables and time invariant on observables. All right, so now validating the assumption. How do we validate it? Well, here is the tricky part. You can val it is possible to validate this assumption. Um, one way of validating it would be to create a graph that plots out the trend in the control group and the treatment group over time. 
However, the problem with that is you need more than two years of data. You need more than two years of data to, um, to create that plot. And so that is, um, it's only going to work if you have more than two years of data. And specifically, you want more than two years of data before the intervention, which is hard to come by. Uh, that's going to be hard uh, to come by. So in reality, usually what we need to do is make a good conceptual argument. All right. All right. So now um, I just want to make clear how we could combine this with different options. Um, so combine the DID method. Uh, first, let me just go back to this regression and make the first thing clear. Uh, let's imagine that you did a randomized control trial experiment and you randomly assigned this variable T. Um, if you did that, if you randomly assigned T and you collected data before the uh, implementation of the intervention and after the implementation of the intervention, uh, then you can still use the difference in difference model. You can use this in conjunction with randomization and it will help control for any imperfections in the randomization. So if you're able to do it, it's good to do it. All right. But now, uh, one specific context in which we might use a dif difference in difference model is a natural experiment. So let me use uh, the example from the natural experiment we did in class, uh, my mock example from Tanzania. I'll use that to illustrate uh, basically using the difference in difference model in conjunction with a natural experiment. All right, so a natural experiment uses natural factors or policy changes to mimic randomization. Natural experiments allow you to create a quote treatment group and control group using some natural phenomenon or policy changes. Now, the reason I put treatment group and control group in 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 um, in uh, quotation marks here is I just want to emphasize the fact that we're not randomly assigning these groups. Uh, nature has assigned them. All right, so I I just I use that um, the the quotation marks to hopefully make it very clear that this is not a randomly assigned intervention. This is not a randomly assigned treatment group and control group. We're using nature. That is, we aren't randomly assigning it. Uh, now, with a natural experiment where you are taking advantage of some variation in nature, which could be, which could be close to random. All right. All right, so uh, in the example in class, I took this example of a natural experiment from Tanzania, I kind of... Um, I illustrated a, a purely hypothetical policy change in Tanzania, and we talked about how to use it as a natural experiment. Uh, so you want to know the impact. So I'm just using this example to illustrate. So let's say you want to know the impact of advanced seeds on farmer income. And Dodoma implemented a policy to provide farmers with advanced seeds, while Manyara did, did not. And so here we have an example of a policy change. And the policy change gives us the opportunity to conduct um, a difference in difference estimation. Uh, I'm sorry, gives us an opportunity to conduct a natural experiment. The natural experiment, uh, basically this policy change allows us um, to, uh, it allows us uh, to basically cr create a treatment group and a control group. All right, how does that work? So natural experiments allow us to create a, a, a quote, treatment and control group using, uh, using policy changes. So in this case, Dodoma farmers have access to free advanced seeds, while Manyara farmers do not. And so therefore, what we do is we create a natural experiment where we say that Dodoma farmers uh, will be our treatment group, our quote treatment group. They're not the, they're not the, they're not the uh, actual intervention that we want. They're not the, they're not necessarily the farmers that get advanced seeds, but they are the um, they are the farmers that are in our, our natural treatment group, our quote treatment group, our natural treatment group, because they're the farmers that are given access to free advanced seeds. All right, well, the farmers in Manyara uh, are the control, the quote control group, the natural control group. Okay, so now Dodoma farmers can be our quote treatment group, um, and Manyara farmers can be our quote control group. We selected a sample along the border, if you remember, um, so that our treatment group farmers could be considered, um, our treatment group farmers and our control group farmers could be considered the same on average. 
All right, and so that was our that was kind of our sneaky experimental design that allowed us to um, to have a meaningful natural experiment uh, that really mimics randomization. All right, so that's what we did. All right, and so because of that, we've basically created a natural RCT. We did not randomly assign advanced seeds, but we used a policy to create a treatment group, kind of a natural treatment group and a natural control group. All right, so now what I want to argue here, or demonstrate here, is that uh, difference in differences can be combined with a natural experiment to improve the robustness of the result. All right, so a natural experiment may not produce a balanced sample. So let's just be clear. So let's say that we have this natural experiment. Dodoma farmers are given access to advanced seeds. Manyara farmers are not. All right, and then we do the best job that we can to try to get a sample of farmers um, that basically will have the treatment group and the control group uh, the same on average. And so what we do is we go in and we collect a sample of data right along the border because we're hoping that farmers that live on the Dodoma side of the border are the same on average as farmers that live on the Manyara side of the border. That's what we're hoping. And we can do our balancing test to try to uh, validate that. And remember, the Dodoma farmers are, are kind of our natural treatment group, and the Manyara farmers are kind of our natural control group. All right, so we're doing the best job that we can to create this natural experiment. But now what if we have a problem? What if we do a great job, we pick a sample along the border, um, and, you know, pick them from the same tribe. So we've got lots of reasons to think that these two populations would be the same on average. Um, but they're not quite. Um, they're similar, but they're not quite the same on average. There's some differences. You do your balancing test, and you find that there are some statistically significant differences between uh, the farmers that live on the Dodoma side of the border and the farmers that live on the Manyara side of the border. All right, and so you cannot conclude that you have statistical independence even though you had a very clever experimental design. All right, so we say, for example, that farmers in Dodoma and farmers in Manyara are still too different uh, from each other. They're not the same on average. All right, we did the best job that we could to create a natural, uh, you know, a, a successful natural randomization uh, that could mimic randomization, but it didn't quite do the trick. It didn't quite go the whole way. Basically, our treatment group and our control group are not quite the same on average. They're similar, but they're not quite the same. And so we can't just do a pure natural experiment like we did in the past lecture. All right. It does not perfectly match or, you know, it does not quite uh, mimic randomization. Now what? What do we do? Well, let's say that we collect the data before and after. Let's say we collected a before and after survey. We collected a survey before the policy was changed, and we collected a survey after the policy was changed. So in this case, we would have a two-year panel data set. And again, in this case, we can use a difference in difference approach using the natural treatment variable in the difference in difference model. So let's using our example, let's illustrate this. So example from Dodoma. Let's say the farmers in Dodoma are still different from farmers in Manyara. All right, they're still different. We didn't quite do it. They're not quite the same on average, even though they're right next to the border. All right. And so in that case, we, we could run a regression of income regressed on Dodoma after the intervention has been put in place, after the policy change. And we could do that and get an estimate here. But in this case, because our, our samples, our treatment group is not the same as our control group on average, um, we could run this regression. And before, um, we would have gotten the ITT, um, but in this case, in this case, beta one hat would be bias. In this case, uh, in this case, beta one hat would be bias. Okay, but now let's imagine that we could try to. Um, combine the idea, let's combine natural experiments and difference in difference. Let's combine these two methods. All right, so now we're saying that we have a before and an after survey. We have data before the intervention, before the policy change, and after the policy change. And so now we're going to combine the natural experiment and the difference in difference. So now we're going to regress income 
measured across differences in people and across differences of time. So it's indexed by IIT. We're going to regress income on Dodoma, this Dodoma variable, which equals 1 if you live in Dodoma and equals 0 if you live in Manara. All right. Um, and then year, so before and after. It equals 1 if the data comes from after the intervention, and it equals 0 if, it, if the data comes from before the intervention. Okay. Plus, and then here is our critical variable, our, our independent variable of interest, year times Dodoma. Okay. You interact the year times the treatment variable or the natural treatment variable. In this case, we'll get an estimate on beta 3. So beta 3 will be the estimated impact of the ownership of advanced seeds on income using Dodoma as a natural experiment treatment variable. So beta, beta 3 hat is the variable, is the estimate of interest. Okay, so now as long, um, as, long as uh, this regression model, as long as we can make the parallel trend assumption, then beta, beta 3 hat will be unbiased. So beta 3 hat will not have a mid variable bias if the assumptions of the difference to difference model hold. That is, as long as, we, as long as the parallel trend assumption holds, then, then this difference to difference estimate, this beta 3 hat, will be an unbiased estimate of the impact of advanced seeds on income using Dodoma as our natural experiment treatment variable. All right, so now let's illustrate that. So that concludes basically how we can integrate natural experiments and difference and differences. Uh, with that said, let's use a difference and difference model in Stata. This is going to be a this is going to be a pretty quick uh, demo. We're just going to illustrate how to use it. All right, so this is going to be lecture lecture sixteen. Difference in differences. All right. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to look at the data to make sure um, that I make very clear how the data works. Okay. So we'll look at the data first. Um, uh, just a background, uh, we are going to look at the impact of a, of a training program on um, employee wages. All right, so we're going to use this wage data set again. All right, this time we're using wage underscore DID. All right, so we're going to look at the impact of a training program on employee wages impact of a training program on employee wages all right and we have we have data on uh, we have data on bef we have data on uh, people that received the training that's our treatment group and those that did not that's our control group all right so we've got that first difference right the difference between the treatment and control we also we also have data on both the treatment treatment and control individuals before and after all right before and after the uh, intervention aka the training all right, so we have everything that we need to do a difference in difference model. Now let's take a look at the data and try to get a feel for it. All right, so here looking at the data, we have our ID number. All right, now this is a panel data set and it's and it's organized long ways. That means um, the panel data this panel data set is stacked on top of each other. All right, that means we have multiple rows for each individual because we have individual one at year zero and we have individual one at year one. Individual two at year zero, individual two at year one. All right, so this is a panel data set organized long ways. All right, and so here we go. We've got, we've got um, the individual ID number. So here's person one. We've got the year, so both zero and one. We know from the description of this data set that, um, that uh, that this is before and after the training program. So zero is before the training program. One is after the training program. Okay, and so now we have wages. We have everyone's wages before and after. 
um, before and after, person one's wages before, person one wages after, person two's wages before, person two's wages after, etc. All right, again, we have education, experience, a bunch of other variables. All right. But now here's the variable that we're really interested in. This training variable. Training equals one if the person is a person who received uh, a training. Now, this can be a little confusing. So, so this training variable equals one if the person received the training. Okay, now let's go through this. I want to talk about this very clearly because this is almost inevitably going to be something that uh, you'll that you will find tricky. Okay, um, because I, I mean, I found this tricky before. So we have to be very clear how this difference in difference estimation works. Let's take a look at this training variable. This training variable equals one if uh, if the person is a person that attended the training. It equals zero if the person is a person that did not attend the training. So let's go through it. Person one. We have two observations for person one. We have before and after. So let's see. For person one, it is zero before and after. So this is a control person. This is a person that did not attend the training. Person two. Again, person two did not attend the training. It is zero in both cases. Person three. Um, person three did not attend the training before, did not attend the training after. Okay, great. Now, here's where it's going to be tricky. Remember, nobody in this sample can could have attended the training before. No one could have attended it in year zero because it didn't exist in year zero. People only could have attended it after. That means they only could have attended it in year one. All right. So now here, let's go here. Training person four. Person four for both years has a one here. This indicates that person four attended the training. Person four is a person who attended the training. Person four is in the treatment group. You'll notice here, and this is the tricky part, you'll notice here that person four has a one even in year zero. Remember, in year zero, the training did not exist. Nobody received the training in year zero. However, person four has a one here. That might be kind of confusing. Why would it have a one here? If they hadn't received the, the, the training yet, shouldn't this one be zero? All right. I hope you guys see why this might be confusing. Let me clarify. This one should not be a zero. This needs to be a one because what we're what we have here, this training variable needs to equal one if the person is in the treatment group. That means they are a person who um, is uh, who basically will receive the training, and so it will be one regardless of the year. It will be one regardless of when they received the training. So obviously, person four received the training in year one. However, they will still be indicated with a one even for year zero, even though they had not received the training yet. Okay, I hope that's clear. So this training variable equals one if the person is a person who received the training, regardless of the year. All right, uh, be very sure that you're clear on that because that's very important. It's very important. All right. That's the thing I want to show you. Now, now that we understand the data, we can understand how this regression model might work. Let's sketch the model. Let's sketch the DID model. What we're going to have is, is wage. All right. And wage is going to equal, obviously, we're going to have our intercept, so beta 0. All right. And then we'll have beta 1. Beta 1 will be attached to the training variable. Remember, the training variable is basically like our treatment variable. It equals one for people that will receive the training, and it equals zero for those that will not receive the training, regardless of the year. All right, the next variable will be beta two, and that's multiplied by the year. All right, so this controls for variation across years. The training variable controls for variation uh, between the treatment group and the control group. Right. This is basically difference one, the difference between the treatment group and the control group. 
this year. This is basically the difference true, the difference across years. And here is the variable of critical interest. Beta 3 is training times year, the interaction term. All right. This is the critical variable. We need this variable in the regression model. This is the critical variable. It will be on beta 3. Beyond that, what we can do is also include some time variant unobservables. I'm sorry, time variant observables. So we'll throw education in there and experience um, and, um, and let's throw network in there. I can't remember if network changes over time. We'll throw network in there just in case. All right, so we'll do beta 4 plus beta 5. All right, we're just kind of sketching out our model here. All right, beta 6 and then, then the error term. All right, so that's what our model is going to look like. Now, you'll notice that we don't have this interaction term. We don't have this interaction term, so we need to create it. So gen, let's create this thing. Gen, that we're going to do train year equals training times year. All right, so we're going to generate that variable. This is going to be the our variable of interest. This is going to be our most important variable. All right, so we've created it. Let's take a look. Let's see what it looks like. And I'm going to put it in order so we can put it next to the other things. Order, ID, year. Um, let's do training, training, and then train year. Oh, I misspelled train year. All right, so let's just do that, and then let's take a look at our data, see what it looks like. All right, so here we go. We've got the ID number, and we have year. All right, and then we have the training variable, and then we have the interaction between the two. Now, our intuition from before might make more, more sense here. All right, so uh, before I said that, uh, so the year, uh, the year variable obviously it equals zero for before and one for after. Um, so it's basically here's person four before and person four after. All right. The training variable equals one regardless of the year for any person who is a person that will receive the intervention. All right. So in this case, the training. And then the interaction term basically multiplies the two together. So the interaction term multiplies year and training together. So zero times zero is zero. Uh, one times zero is zero, zero times zero, et cetera, okay? And so now here's where it makes a difference. So this training variable equals zero, equals zero. So year equals zero times training equals one equals zero. So it equals one only for treatment individuals, so people, so, uh, people that receive the training in the year in which they receive the training. So basically in the after year, in the post year. All right, so this is a multiplication. This, e this equals one if basically year times training. Um, so if year equals one and training equals one. Okay, so that's what the data looks like. Let's run a regression and we will uh, we'll call it a day. DID regression. Reg, wage, train, year. Oh, it's training, training year, train, year, and then a bunch of other variables. EDUC, experience, uh, and then what else did we say? We said network. All right, so here is our regression model. Uh, we'll use robust standard errors. All right.
Okay, so let's run the regression. Whoops. Let's shrink this down and let's run the regression. Here we go. All right. Okay, so then here is our result. Okay, so let's run the regression. All right, and here we go. Here is our result. So what do we have here? We have a variable on training. We have a variable on year, and we have a variable on the interaction term. Now, what I mentioned before is that our coefficient of, int of interest, so this is in the interpreting world, all right, interpretation, okay, the variable the variable of interest is train year so the interaction term all right so the estimate of the impact is uh, 3.2 and it's significant at the five percent level all right so then so if we think that the parallel trend assumption holds then we would then we would um, conclude the following the training program caused a 3.2 basically a 3.2 uh, dollar increase in wages. All right, now you might be interested in these other coefficients, so coefficient on training and the coefficient on year. Um, so what, what can we learn from this? So this term, now this training term is no longer the effect of the training. This is, it's not the effect of training. This term is give, telling you the difference, it's, it's telling you the difference between the treatment group and the control group. So basically we can say, um, we can also say that the, that the um, treatment group, all right, so those who receive the training, so training equals one, um, the treatment group has um, 1.8, um, um, lower wages than the control group. Okay. Um, likewise, we can say, we can also say that um, wages increased by 2.6 um, dollars per hour. Um, from the pre data, uh, so from the first year, from the first year to the second year. All right, so basically before and after. So they change over time. So, uh, so there was a positive time trend in wages. Wages uh, were increasing are increasing over time. All right, and then finally, uh, we can say what's the impact of the training? Well, the impact on the training is that the training causes people to have $3.2 per hour more, and that's significant at the 5% level. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you have a great day. I really hope you enjoyed the course. It was really a pleasure um, uh, having you in the course. I, I, it was really a, a pleasure teaching these lectures uh, in this way. Um, 
feel free to let me know if you have questions and um, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. All right. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.